What up, y'all? It's Somo, and I just had a great time with Justin on the Men of the Hour podcast, and it was my first podcast. Uh, we talked about the duality of man, which is also the name of my new album. We got in a manifestation. We got in the emotions of being a man. So if you like getting deep, you like talking all kinds of stuff, tune in. Joseph, dude, wait, wait, wait. So this is your first podcast? This is my first podcast. I haven't even done an interview in like two years, maybe longer. And you just fucking oh. said yes to the men of the hour. Dude, we're recording, by the way. Wait, I had to get that on tape. This is your first podcast and first interview in a minute. <laughs> yeah, what, it is. What, can I ask you what made you say yes rather than the fact that Drew and I are buddies? Uh, mostly because I remember you out of all the interviews I've done over the years. It's probably one of the better interviews I ever had. So. Even even like meeting and going to radio stations and whatnot, you yeah. just, I don't know, you just seem like a real dude. So I oh. remember that. You're a real dude, and this whole episode's about you, buddy. No, I'm so, I'm so, I'm fucking excited. You know, right before we hit the record button, everybody who's listening right now, thanks for being here. Thanks for coming back. And if you're here for the first time, this is Somo, capital S, capital M, Joseph Anthony Somers Morales. You know, I don't even think I got your name right the first time I interviewed you, and that was like four years ago in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, no, I mean you nailed it now, though. That's all, man. <laughs> What are you sipping on, dude? Is it coffee, tea? Do you drink coffee? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just drinking a little double, I don't know, espresso. I don't, I don't know what it's called. But. Probably like a flat white double espresso or something, dude. And, and, and Soma was nice enough to let us in his home studio, which is, is fucking killer, dude. Look at all your, your, your records, your, your, your situation in the back with the, with the soundproof everything. Is this in Texas? Brood. Right? You've been hanging yeah. out here for a while, probably since the pandemic had hit, right, in Texas? Oh yeah. I haven't, I mean, I haven't really left except to go to Home Depot and in the nursery where I get my plants. I don't, I haven't done much. <laughs> I just don't make, I make songs when I can and go out in the uh, garden and just chop yeah, it up. You got two green thumbs now I hear, right? What's going on? <laughs> what, let's, let's start there. And then I want to talk this album with you, but you, you got two green thumbs now. Is that cause you're in Texas? I mean, last I saw you, man, you were still like a, the pop somo that we all knew from the get-go yeah. of Ride, right? Like, what, what I mean, changed I, I, all that? I, I've always been, you know, pretty country-minded. I, I obviously built a brand on being, like, this clean-cut, like, you know, I, I was, like, I entered the business trying to be a businessman, and, you know, I come from, like, a country small town, and I feel like that's probably more who I am, and it was more an image I built. Yeah. And it's, it's not that I'm not that guy, too. And I'm that's gonna say. really what we'll get into when we talk about my, my new album with yeah. the, the whole duality of man concept is I think we all have like multiple facets to ourselves as mm. people, as men. And I've just really been exploring that more like nature, like nurture side of myself. Cause I recently had a, a baby girl. Um, I have two daughters now and I just, I want them to, to know what's out there in, in nature and just like how to treat the earth and, so I've just been really diving in, man. I, I've been reading, I read articles. Like, I, I feel like I could go to college for it now. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> go to like an agri, like an agriculture school or something. If, if it doesn't work out, I'll just be an arborist and help people chop their trees down. So. That's it. I think you got the best of both worlds though. I mean, look at you, you're planted in Texas with your two baby girls and, and, and you're able to kind of like farm out and do the things with everything agriculture, it seems right. And still produce music. So let's get to the album. Cause I mean, duality or the duality of man, for example, where, where did it come from? What inspired the title? And I mean, obviously it's about you and the kind of two lives you feel like you've probably been going between, right? Right. Yeah. I think so. A lot of people in pop culture right now, you know, they're kind of, everybody is kind of on this manifestation path and like what you see and what you believe and what you like go to strive for, you can achieve it just by manifesting it. And I, I think that is, true and i read a lot of, of stuff like on reddit and whatnot and I, I discovered a guy called neville goddard and i i consider myself spiritual not necessarily like religious in a sense but i definitely you know i'm god fearing but i'm not sure <laughs> but um so I, I read a bunch of into like the neville goddard stuff and there's the concept of you know manifestation and i don't know what you think about it but for me ever since I was a little kid, like when you would get the little things that say like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like I would put singer mm. and I really believed 
the whole time when I was younger that I, I would be who I am. Mm. There and were I like didn't, barely any surprises probably. I feel it. No, it's, that's what's crazy though, is it is a surprise. Cause like how many people wrote what they wrote when they were like six years old, did they actually do, you know? Oh yeah. And, yeah. and I feel like I just, I manifested it. Like at a, at a, I, I remember, man, it's funny, a, a real funny, not funny, but like yeah. a real story is I saw men in black. So when it came out, like I saw men in black, I remember going home and I was like, man, what if aliens are real, all this stuff. And yeah, yeah. I was like talking to the universe, the God maybe. And I was, I was shooting a basketball and I just stood there for like an hour or two, just shooting. I was like, when I grow up, I'm going to be a, like, I'm going to be a famous singer. And I was like, I would shoot and I would miss. I'd be like, no, that didn't count. And I would do it again. And I would do it again. And I would make it and I would make it. And I was like, that one counted. And <laughs> so like this whole time, my whole life, I'm like, I got to these points and I, I, I met all these people. I did all these things. And it, I really feel like it's because I just believed I could do it and not mm. necessarily just because like the opportunity was presented. I think everybody has opportunities presented and, a lot of people don't act on them. So like what and or want, create them. Right. Like mm. with music, like we create out of thin air. Like you can plant a seed in the garden and then have a humongous tree. It's like it, it almost comes out of nowhere. Like where is it coming from? I think yeah. everything behind you is like the root. And the 100%. roots grow into something massive. And mm. I don't know. That's what I did. I I might be <laughs> like rambling on, but I, bro, well, I think been about too it. Th- social in the last two years. So. Hey, uh, you, you got the whole hour. You can have two hours. You can have a three-hour episode. I don't give a shit, dude. I think everything <laughs> you're saying is so important. Let's go. To, let's go to manifestation really quickly, and then I want more about like your your idea of living kind of a dual life. I mean, I'm half Asian. So like, I always tell people, I'm like, you could either choose to have the best of both worlds, or you could choose to be half one, half the other. I was like, no, you can be a hundred percent both. Uh, yeah, you similar can be a hundred percent you. Right. Similar to your lifestyle, right? You might've portrayed this pop singer, but now you're, you're, you're kind of going back to the roots, but you could still have both of those at the same time without feeling like you're kind of shape shifting and shit, which is, we'll get into that uh, manifestation totally. really quickly just like you would plant a tree and hope that it's like, say you're planting a tomato tree, for example, and your, your first thought is to just put the seed in the ground, water it once a day, twice a day, come back to it a week later and see it bloom and grow. And then eventually you see something with the, you know, tomatoes on a tree, right? That's like creating a vision, for example, which is equivalent to manifesting anything. It's totally what it is, man. Everything in the garden, like there's, there's all these rules that they make up, you know, you don't want to plant something too close, but that's because other people, learn that process and when you're painting the vision in a garden or like in a song like you decide where that's going to go and based on the rules that people have made you can literally have it be exactly how you see in your head and i know i read a lot that you know some people don't actually visualize things in their head but for me i hear and i see things like in my third eye like I can see it. So I know what it's going to be. It might be, it might grow a little bit more this way or that, that way, but like I can plan it. I can plan where the center goes. I, I, I'm the center of that, you know? And so like for a song, I just, I let that paint the picture and it might not be exactly how I heard it in my head, but it but usually it's... ends up pretty close now. Cause I've just gotten better and better and better and better. And I can literally prune it. Yeah. How I want it to be. <laughs> It'll get damn right close to it. You keep sipping on your coffee. I'm going to ask you something else. Uh, when you, I mean, what, what point did you give yourself the autonomy to do that? Was it when you wrote down that when you were a child, were you that young when you told yourself, you know what, I'm going to be a fucking artist. I'm going to make those free throw shots and, and I'm only going to count the ones that make it. Cause the ones that make it in the hoop or the, that means that I'm going to fulfill what I want to do. Like, it, you know, was it always in your life that you knew you had the autonomy to kind of create opportunities and do whatever the hell you wanted to in a good way, of course. Yeah. I think, I think everybody has like gifts they're given, you know, like I'm not necessarily like the best at math because I have a very ADHD daydreaming mind. So I fell behind a lot of times in my youth and that, but I could sing. And that was something I last on to. So, you know, it's like a lot of people want to be famous. You know, I want to be a famous singer. And, and but, you know, you don't sing good. I mean, 
That's not bad. That's not a bad thing. Wait, you're talking to me. (laughs) No, 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 not you. I'm saying, I'm just saying in a general sense, like a lot of people want to do certain things because they see other people, they idolize certain people, but you got to idolize yourself. You got to look within yourself and be like, you know, I might fail math, but I'm really good in English. Like I ended up in AP English. I was horrible in math, but I could write. And I, and I realized that about myself, yep. you know, good and so I just nurtured that. And to answer your question on like, did I just know I could do it? I mean, yeah, there was, there was even a time when I was in like eighth grade and I was practicing, fo- I was on the football team and I got hit in my neck and it, it like hurt my, my voice. And I was like, oh my gosh, this, this might be the end of that that this vision that I had of who I was going to be when I thought at that time, I'm like, I'm going to go play college football. I'm going to be just a normal guy and work. I'll work construction if I have to. It's like, I knew I was going to be that still. I had this in the back of my head, even seated then that I was going to be that. And I wasn't even like focused on being that, but I still protected it. You know, I still had this like innate sense. I was like, Oh, like crap, like my throat, I can't lose that because I don't know yet, you know? And then I ended up nothing. It's just crazy, bro. Yeah, It's crazy. I, I re, like, I've been watching like Russ and all these different people. I saw Polo G, like uh-huh. they talk about visualizing, like it's, it's a real thing, it's a, man. It's, it's a vibe. so real. It's, so, it's real. so real, bro. Or else do you feel like you're wandering? There's a difference between wandering in life and, uh, and walking. Does that make sense? I don't know where I heard that. But like if you're wandering, you're kind of like loosey goosey and shit. And I don't right. like that. I don't know how like you are when you're planning things out or when you have like a creative writing session, but you can kind of see it come to life as you go. That is the best feeling in the world to see something again, like manifesting or just coming to life to some extent and like actually seeing, okay, well, all right, this is phase one. Now we're in phase four holy shit, phase seven is very close to what I envisioned, but better. What would that, like, what does that look like for you? When you see things and you're like, well, that was better than what I had envisioned because I was so strict with myself and intentional to your point that that's what I wanted. Yeah, I mean, to your point, like wandering versus walking, it's it's really true because you have to do things with intention. Like I can make a song and just be loosey-goosey with it and it's probably going to be pretty good. It'll, it'll be all right. You know, like, but, and that's what I do. Like, I like the first, like, just throw everything at it. Like I freestyle, like everything I write. So like, if I have like a bass line, like of music, I'll just lay out my vocals. I'll just throw it all at the board. I'm saying whatever I'm saying, like some about trees, some about my daughter, some about how I'm feeling and I'll throw it all at the board. And then I'll subtract all the things that don't make sense. And then that's where I get to the point where I'm in, intentional with it. And Cutting I pull the, the actual do up. Cutting the fat, as they would say, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, I think that in art, that's just the, the best way to do it. If you're trying to create with intent is to let yourself wander, but then turn it into a walk. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. <laughs> I know what you're saying duality of man though do you feel like you had two versions of 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 joseph and and where did you decide like that was a good thing or not throughout your career at least yeah i mean i think this i probably have a lot more than just dual sides but like specifically <laughs> specifically towards my fan and my 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 big super fans and like my big fans know like who i am more so behind the scenes is like i'm a family man like I'm a father, but I also have played that sex symbol role. And that's who I am too. And that's like the different sides of me, the the different facets. And with this album, I really subtracted all, like I still write, you know, sexual songs and sensual songs, but I subtracted all that from this album because I want this album to show that, that dual side in us. I want to show the world, you know, I'm not just a sex song singer. Like there's depth to me. And for me, and to a lot of people, it might not make sense, but for me, it feels like such, such a more grown up album, just subtracting that, that sexual energy from it, because 
I feel like I'm standing in front of the world as who I really am. And like a lot of people are fake nowadays and like they have writers and it's not bad to have that, but I have the ability to, to say exactly what, what I mean and what I'm feeling. And that's really what I want to do with this album. Cause I mean, it's my eighth album. Like I've said so much, I've said some of the same things and I haven't talked too much about being a father. So I wanted to put that in. I wanted to make a song with my dog, with my daughter. Um, not to get like emotional, but it, it, it's a very, very emotional process for me. And like, I consider myself like a real manly man. I grew up playing football. Like I did construction, like I, I can hold it down and like, and, and do all that stuff. But there's also an emotional side to me. And I think for most men, and you got to nurture that and you got to look inside to really like be your true self and to be a leader and to like to walk with intent. So, yeah, <laughs> that's why I made this album. I, I mean, and I called it the duality of man because I've been living in that manifestation like thought process. And I just really I wanted people to see that other side of me mm. and, you know, like branding people and like labels and, and the industry i know that like talking about god and talking about like just more sensitive subjects as a man isn't what's going to like sell but i've sold and now i'm here to like you know give a little more <laughs> really you're giving the people what i think they've been waiting for you know what i mean because you get to something like an eighth album and i can only imagine i mean it's so cool to see a singer songwriter have those types of vulnerable emotions and put them into words and then to music and allow your fans that have been watching this like sexual somo for so long right like see another side of you and to your point about facets i think people confuse i would i would assume i could be very wrong and if you're listening to me say this shit and you're like fuck you i don't think that's true say it by all means but I do think I've met a lot of people lately who feel like you have to be one way in, especially in entertainment business. We've had a lot of talented entertainers on the show or on this podcast. And we always hear that, like, that's not always how it is. And I've asked the picture perfect question. I've asked the, how do you go home? And, you know, what do you really think about before you go to bed? Or what's the hardest question you've asked yourself? And I can ask all this to you too, but you just said it all right. Like this it's it's, it's embracing the fact that you have multiple areas of your life that you want to embrace. And now you're bringing that to your fucking fans. And that's really dope. Thanks, man. Good for you. You know what you said? <laughs> you keep bringing up manifestation and I'm going to keep bringing up too, because it's just like so cool. You know what I might do with the title of your podcast? And this is as candid as I get the duality of man, but then in parentheses, manifestation, right? Like manifestation. Yeah. I mean, that's, that that's what he based that whole, uh, the Neville Goddard guy, he based yeah. that whole title off of like there, there are, there's so many ways to manifest different things in different areas of your life. And, yeah, man, it's it's nice to hear it from like an, another man. I, I mostly get feedback from women, so like, I think a lot of men can appreciate that, and you know, see a guy with muscles like diving into his emotions and like. It I used to make you I, any less weak either. Right. No, totally not. We can all, you know, we we've seen presidents cry. Like the the leaders of the world have yeah. emotion. Like, if you don't have emotion, then you're just a psycho. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think so. Cause I um, but also like, isn't that, you said fake people, isn't that fake to pretend that you don't have emotions? Like imagine think, you're walking around earth and like meeting all these really great people in your life, but you're like pretending that you're like buff and strong and, and, and oh, great. You are, you can pick up like a 65 pound dumbbell with your fucking pinky, but no, it's like, you don't want to avoid emotions. Have, hey, let me ask you this. Speaking about emotions really quickly, if you've ever been emotional about your daughter writing songs or just like had a bad day or whatever that might have been, when you were trying to avoid it, didn't you feel worse rather than letting it out? Yeah, you almost just kind of feel numb. You're just in a state of almost waiting. And like, I, I do that. Like there's this album was that, I mean, it's not a long album. It, it really wouldn't have taken me very long to finish if I just did it right. But listening to the song with my daughter, I posted a, a kind of a meme picture of me on stage, like like I was crying, talking about listening to the song with my daughter. Uh, it's called Rain. Um, 
that song was really hard for me to finish just listening to the notes and like getting the little because like I like to listen and make sure there's no clicks and all this different stuff I have these different processes but you have to listen like 100 to a thousand times the same song over and over and that song is so emotional for me like I literally like will cry listening to it but some days I don't want to feel like that like some days I might need to build the chicken coop and I'm like bro I ain't trying to like I ain't trying to feel like that today and so it took a little longer you know like sexual is almost easy bro as a man and all the men listening like it's we ha- we're we have that energy every day always like i need to release it and it's gone i can write a song like that and i can listen to it anytime you know but like these emotional songs they take they take a little longer just because it's like you're really in there and you, you gotta feel those feelings it. for it to be real like yeah and we could hear it in your voice too you know what i mean that's the coolest thing about music. I had a note here that says musical therapy and, and tuning into the right songs for the right emotional states, you know, and, and now you're giving fans choices for that. Right. I think the best artists in the, in the business of music, again, I could be very wrong. If you're listening to this and you're a music professional, sorry, not sorry, but like having therapy as music is also very, very, very important. I mean, if there's like, um, you know, there's a day when I'd go run on the West side highway here in New York or something. And I go downtown and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to listen to like Seabreeze ocean jazz, or I'm going to listen to Somo song talking about some, uh, we can make love or whatever that might be. Right. And, mm-hmm. and it does add a different level of value, which is why music is the universal love language. And it is just so important to people. Like you don't even have to know like someone that's not English speaking could totally tune into your music, which I'm sure you've experienced and oh, yeah. still resonate the same way. Cause it's the tunes, it's the level of voice, it's the vocals, it's your daughter's voice in the song rain, which I got a sneak peek of it's dope. And I got the sneak peek of the whole thing. So like drew, you're fucking amazing. I like, I was like, I'm not going to step into an interview after not talking to you for four years, conversation, not interview. I don't call these interviews uh, and, and not tell you that this music is on fire yeah you like it i love it do you feel like i nailed like i really really tried to tailor i like you said like i trimmed all the fat it's it's specifically you know how i've been we've all been kind of sad over the past year and or two i mean now i guess but yeah i don't know what do you think you like it i love it bro i loved anything you would have put out in the world but this is very specific and the messaging is very clear and that gets lost in albums like you remember back in the day i don't know if you were like this as a kid i mean you probably weren't because you're a singer songwriter but i i I know that a lot of times i would look at albums there's like 12 songs that have nothing to do with each other right yeah i mean i've yeah i've always i've always been a fan of like conceptual work and yeah a lot of that does get lost nowadays because and this is no hate to the industry because I've written songs like this, but like when you have eight, eight writers on a song and then you have eight other writers on another song, like, like, let's say Beaver's album, the cohesiveness isn't naturally going to be there as much. Right. Like, and that's, that's fine. But like, I just love when stuff is conceptual and you can tell like there's one person really leading the lyrical content or like the musical production and stuff ties together like i know a lot of people you can reference like pink floyd like they're they're the big album the the one that everybody wears on their shirt is very much like how i like to make albums what's crazy is i didn't listen to that album until after i had made a few albums of my own and i was like wow they made this like how i would make it if i were to make music like that you know what i'm saying and it's very much just tied together like I'm telling a story like I'm using the same words sometimes even in, in a lot of these songs. And I think that's what ties it together more. And I used to be scared to like use the same word or like maybe the same concept because I was like, is that going to be like played out? But it's just not because somebody might connect to one song and not connect to another song, but you still got your message across. Still got I your think message. Is, you know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. I love when you say that. <laughs> I don't even, I think I, I, you might've said that four years ago too. You've always said that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know. I, I hear you. Like, Texas thing. I don't know. <laughs> it might be. It might be a Texas thing, dude. You bring up so many good points and it's so valuable. Um, you probably have no trouble checking in with yourself. I would imagine like 
how do you check in with yourself? Is it through meditation? Do you have like, so for me, I do it on Saturday mornings. Usually I low key really look at it in a week's time span. And then yeah. like the daily moments, you know what I mean? If I'm feeling a little exhausted or whatever, I'm like, all right, bet. Sit like five minutes, sit down, get your shit together and keep going. But how do you check in with yourself? I mean, I really just, I'm very much in my head always. So I guess I'm constantly checking in on myself. I mean, we all go through those moments where like you go brain dead and you might just like watch TikToks like for three hours straight or <laughs> like do something like that. But I mean, really and truly, it's just disconnecting from anything anybody else might say. Like I, I recently just unfollowed everybody on social media and like got off for a while. And because I felt like, I mean, everything that we see and, and take in, it influences who we are, whether you like it or not, we're human algorithms. So like, if I'm watching, like, I don't know, like if I'm on Reddit and I'll, I'm only watching like the, uh, those horrible videos where people are getting like, like dying and stuff, like you're taking that in. Like I can feel strong be like, oh, I'm just desensitizing myself to that, but it, it goes into you. Like you dream that stuff, you know, like it comes out of you in different ways. And so like, I just detached from all that. And I guess to check on myself, I mean, I'm in a good place today because I finished my album and like, I'm getting to write new songs and I'm like, Oh, what's the next journey going to be. And, but I, I, I was down this weekend. Like, you never know, man. Like we all go, we all go through moments and I think letting yourself have those moments, like, Today is not a day I, I can listen to my song rain because I'm just not trying to feel those emotions. I think that's OK. You got to you got to reflect and be like, what's going to get me to the next point? Because it's not always bad and it's not always good. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm real, but I don't know, man. It's like we all really naturally stay at a point of neutral. So like, yeah. Sometimes there's ups, but sometimes you're going to fall way down. But like, for yeah. the most part, we're all pretty neutral, right? And when you're in neutral, it could ultimately kind of have yeah. you going into a situation or a flow state of what we talked about, which is like, uh, you know, uh, wandering instead of walking, you know, and like, you don't want to be in a place where like you are brain dead and kind of just live in going through the motions when you can totally kind of take control of that. You know, there's so many people that understand the conception of like mastering the mind, for example. And I think that's so powerful because you don't, you don't often look at it that way, but you can trick your mind. You can, you can, uh, you can probably get your brain in a certain state that allows you to feel a little bit less stressed uh, to your point, which you just said, you know, making sure that all the noise is kind of cleared out where, but that ultimately you are also in your head too. Everybody is. It's like the thoughts that you have wandering around your head. Sometimes I think you can also control those. And I think for creative, that's really tricky. Wouldn't you say for you? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm definitely like one of those people that kind of ruminates and I have to like make myself stop. Like and rumination is just where you like continuously think about something bad or something that could have like affected your, it just affects you badly. Like maybe Maybe I had, and this is like four years ago, like maybe that show, that first show that you were at, a lot of times the first show is bad. And like, I can sit there and be like, ah, like, damn, like now every show is going to be bad. I can ruminate on that thought or I can just say, no, I'm going to go to the next show. It's going to get better. Have you and been, I, sorry to pause you. Have you then ever looked at that and said, you know what? That was actually a really good show. So what I said earlier about tricking the mind as clumsy as it sounds, like I think klutz probably do this a lot. I know I do it all the time. You could like look at something because it is perspective. Say it was For a sure. bad show. My friend Mike and I hope she's tuning. I, I know she'll tune into this. She was the producer on that interview you and I did together at that show. It was great from a fan's <laughs> perspective, right? From an yeah. audience perspective. For you, maybe there was like some hiccups in the vocals. Maybe you heard the drum beat a little wrong or whatever that might have been. But you could also look at that and say, you know what? That that was a really good show. Next one's just going to be better, and I'm going to listen to the drums a little bit. You know what I mean? I don't know if you've ever totally. Heard yeah. No, that's. I mean, that's a really good thing. It, it is about perspective. I hold myself. You know, I'm not like a household name, like The Weekend or or Beaver or anybody, but I feel like I progress well because I I compare myself to them in a sense of 
I know I could be that big if the world accepted me for what I'm trying to deliver. Are they going to? Maybe not. But I'm cool with that. And I think a lot of artists, like, they ruminate on, oh, I'm not big yet. Like, ah, oh, like, but it's not, that's not what it's about. You just got to be the best you and, like, have that perspective and be like, well, I'm SOMO and I'm, I'm the best version of SOMO that I, I can be, right? And yeah, to point out, and, and to point out, like, it is perspective for sure. Like what you said, like most people don't know. And I learned that really quick and I've done 14 headlining tours now with like 30 shows a tour. And what you really learn quickly is that the things that go wrong, like maybe one show, my lights weren't working and like the show started 15 minutes late. And I was so stressed in that moment. Like, Oh my gosh, like all my fans are going to hate me now. People don't remember that. Like, then I don't they'll remember just remember that like Beyonce, Mariah Carey show up whenever the fuck they want to. So like, you're good to show 15 <laughs> minutes. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Bro, it, it, it's so funny. Cause like, I've only had like that happen a couple of times. I'm very, like, very strict on like time and like showing up and being, not being late. I feel like that's like a, a important part delivering anything. Like I could have 20 fans out there or I could have 20,000. I'm going to treat the 20 fans like I would treat the 20,000. And so I like to like, I really pride myself on not, not being late. That might, it might be a fault in a way. Cause I don't think it does cause that's, stress sometimes. Cause yeah, it, but that's good manners. Yeah. I know a lot of people don't have good manners anymore. Though, bro. Yeah. You probably ain't heard this in two years, dude, but you are, you're in a good place uh, from the outside looking in. I've been watching you uh, for four years, dude, been following you. So like, listen it's you got to cut yourself some slack at the same time you know what i mean he's like bro you're like 20 years younger than me shut the hell up but no for real like i think from the outside looking in i will tell you that like i'm the same way you don't ever want to be late to something because time is too valuable we just talked about this with uh pastor tim timberlake you guys would be such good friends by the way he's he's in the south as well but like southeast you're like mid-south so whatever i'll connect you guys but you know we were talking about the importance of time and it should not be wasted. It's the little things like when you're looking at your day-to-day -day schedule and you might have like an open day to do something, you can choose if you want to write music. And if you're not feeling creative, great, go do something with your kids. If your kids are well taken care of and they're doing something with school or whatever, then like do something for yourself. If that's off the check, you know what I mean? Like it's literally about going down a mental checklist of things that are going to make your life worth living to then understand how important time is. Cause you like, look at this four years. I have not talked to you in four years. Could you imagine how much lost time is like, or how much time we're having to make up in four years, but it doesn't feel as so. Cause I know you've been utilizing time. Well, I've been utilizing time well. And then now we can talk as if we were sitting on those couches backstage in Nashville. Right. Yeah. It's funny you say that. Uh, my, my main producer, Cody, who executive produced this project with me. Um, he said that about, that's what he likes about me the most is that it doesn't matter it's not like we have endings it's just pauses in the relationship and because I don't really feel like I'm much different than I was when I was like 20 versus when I was 10 and when I first was like I'm gonna be a singer when I was six or whatever I I don't like endings so I like to just say like you know see you next time and you probably never continue say the conversation you know <laughs> yeah you know, because there's like, yeah, there could be lost time and gaps with relationships. And I'm sure you've seen that too. A lot of people look at it that way. They're like, oh, you know, I got to stay in like in really close touch with my friends and my, you know, whoever, my loved ones and stuff. But I always loved, and as a military brat traveling a lot, like it's almost refreshing when you haven't seen them in a long time, then you can actually focus on catching up where have things been placed in your lives. What are the biggest updates and things like that within the relationship of the two because otherwise you're going to exhaust the relationship don't you think yeah i mean i'm i'm very much like an um what is it ambivert so like i don't necessarily like need to like keep tabs on my friends or anything i, I really do like that aspect because you're right i mean you can definitely wear out your welcome with people and uh i mean 
I, lo I love my children. I'm with them all the time. And it's really good and healthy that my oldest goes to school and she has that little bit of break, you know, and I miss her when she's gone. And it's been great to be home because for the last, well, I guess the, the, the seven years I was touring heavily, you know, the first five years of her life, I was off and on gone for like, like two months at a time. And she would come visit and I would come visit, but I try to remember that. Like, is that lost time or was, I was just trying to give her a good life. And like now, I don't know. I start, see, I'm going to start going off topic, but like, and you don't even have kids yet, but it's so good that you, you realize that because I recently quit smoking like four months ago and it's been so, so good for my, my health and, in my mindset and I'll, I'll always forever be like a kind of like a stoner but I wanted to grow up in a sense and I think about the time that I wasted just sitting there and I replaced that with like teaching my daughter how to ride her bike and that time that time is like time you don't get back and I love what you said like you can like choose what to do with that time right and like if you lose that time it's just gone and like I could sit on TikTok or I could go outside with my daughter and like show her we could look for frogs, you know, like that might not be the most fun thing for me to do. But through her eyes and like watching her experience the world, it's like it's it's just way better use of your time. Like it's just an incredible feeling. And I, I don't want to look back in like 20 years and be like, damn, I, I didn't I didn't do that. Like. So I, I take that before we even talked, I take that advice. I take it from older people. Like there was a house being built next door to me and this, uh, the irrigation guy, the guy that puts the sprinklers in, he literally was talk. He talked to me for like 30 minutes or an hour. He had moved from California and I guess he saw me, you know, with my daughter and like, he broke down crying because his daughters were grown up and they, they moved away. And he's like, you don't get that time again like they're gonna go off and they're gonna have their own lives and like bah! I get I get emotional I'm an emotional man but you don't you don't get that time back man it's crazy you're lucky to realize that right now as they're still young you know and I think the false realization people have with reality always makes me so frustrated what I mean by that is I've watched people know that they should quit smoking and spend more time with their daughters like you just did. Or I know that people know that they won't get the time back, but still waste it on Instagram. And I'm just looking at it like, oh my God, you just got another gray hair on your fucking head. Or you just got fatter for sitting down. Like, and, and it's that change of mindset that like, I think the show now where we're at, I mean, you're well into 50. So like we've bypassed 50 with you, thank God. But like, that's like, we've, we've produced this podcast around the narratives of, of our guests like you who are so great, but also understanding that like, you can really do a lot with the life you have in whatever you want to do it with you it's music and now family and staying near your, your green thumbs in Texas. And you have all these facets to your life that are just so great because you make it great, you know, and, and congrats for giving up smoking, by the way. I mean, it's hard for a lot of people to do that, but when you can look for alternatives, that's another great point you brought up when you find alternatives to these you know, not so good habits. I won't say bad, but not so great habits. It, it makes it a little bit easier to give it up. Would you say like, like you, totally. right. You're going with your daughter to hang out and not totally. thinking about smoking is totally the alternative. Yeah. I mean, and it like, it, it, I smoke green, so I don't know if it's as hard to quit as much like mentally as it is physically. I, I smoked a lot. So like, Maybe it was a little difficult, but I don't know. I just kind of cold turkey it because like it's great to be meditative and it's great to like have that flow um, when you don't have certain responsibilities. But like like you said, like you only get so much time and like like a 30 minute smoke sesh quickly can become like a two hour sitting down looking at Reddit sesh. And 
I take in a lot of information and I don't think it's bad necessarily to stay up on pop culture and like, you know, have a day where you like, I like to use Fridays as my like TikTok day. And I just, you know, I just watch a lot of TikTok and because that's the current place that you get the most organic information from humanity, I think at the moment. Right. And before that it was Instagram and Twitter and, and those just kind of became battlegrounds and yeah. Yeah. Like they're still useful, but yeah. Like, I don't know. Is it, do you think it's a, like how much time do you spend watching that stuff? Because I, I try to be in the know, you know, like, yeah. so, and it gives me good song ideas, but for I the most it. part, it's probably not, it's not healthy, I guess. Right. Uh, my my take on it is it's it it's so subjective to what you want to use it for. I use Instagram as like a business card, a scouting tool, staying connected with friends, people like you. Uh, I don't have TikTok, and I just I don't know. I think it like you can get your news anywhere. So like you with Reddit, that's me with like headline emails that I have subscribed to, for example. But there's also information overload that I meant to bring up a little bit ago. It's like, you can always have too much of anything, let alone information that your brain is trying to absorb and retain. I hate, I don't know if how you are. I mean, you're so good at English. I was good. I was terrible at math. Not so great at English, just really good at talking really loud in the classroom and getting people <laughs> in trouble. But which is why we host a podcast now. You know what I mean? So like, we I mean, we're it, similar in that sense though. <laughs> right. But I think you and I would like, we could sit here and talk for like hours. I already know it, but like we play into our strengths over time, which is so valuable to see. But then I start thinking like, you know, how many times have you like read something or talked with someone and not put it in the right part of your brain to retain that information. And that's so frustrating. So like you said it earlier, cutting the fat, that's, also important when thinking about absorbing social media content too. So I don't know. I mean, this could help anybody listening now and Joseph, I want your take. I'm going to throw it back to you, right? Like as, as I say this, but when you consume information, let's use social media, for example, you also get to dictate your filters and I get there's an algorithm and shit, but you get to pick like the pages you go to, or you make that couple second decision prior to jumping on social media as to what you're going on there for. In that case, you get to filter out what you don't want. Like you did, you did a plunge where you just like cold turkey and unfollowed everybody, which is, I think, hard to do. I think people don't do yeah. enough digital detoxing, but on a Friday, for example, when you're getting on TikTok, I'm sure like you're, you're able to kind of source through things enough to where you can tell yourself, I want to remember that, or that's going to make me laugh. And maybe I'll use that in like a song or lyric or something, you know? Yeah. I mean, for me, I, I use like TikTok is very much like more a form of entertainment. And so like half of it's, you know, just dancing little hot chicks and that's great. <laughs> and then the others like just dumb conspiracies and political rants. And I think a lot of that stuff is really just a distraction, you know, like a, a lot of these arguments that get put, you know, into the foreground of, or the, the front of normal people like it's just a way to keep us all busy i mean i i grew up in a really conservative town like mostly everybody was re republican and like you know and i'm in the music business now like everybody i talk to in that is the opposite side and there were definitely like some liberal people in that town and there would just be the same it's all the same arguments it's still it's like, yeah, are we ever going to just it. like agree to disagree and like move past it in order yeah. to build progress? And that I consider myself pretty progressive. So I don't know, like, how do we progress and respect other people's beliefs and views and treat everybody like we all like we all are just pushing each other away when we really just want people to come and embrace our ideas. It's like. It's like the country dudes who might be like, yo, why is someone wearing overalls? You ain't country, bro. You don't hunt. Like, I don't hunt because I can buy meat. And like, I'd rather use that time with my daughter. Yeah. It doesn't mean I can't hunt. You Just know? choosing like, to live a different kind of country man lifestyle. Yeah. You know? Like, but it's like, it doesn't make me less country because I don't 
do certain things. My overalls aren't as dirty as you. What if you like embrace those people versus push them away? They're going to be more likely like some people would never wear boots and overalls because they're like, I don't want to look like I don't want to look like them because then people will think I'm like them. And it's like, bro, like. It, imagine if those people weren't like, you're not country. If they're like, oh, that's cool. You're wearing country stuff. Like, come on and be country. I'll teach you even more country stuff, you know, versus like, no, you're diff. Why are you wearing my stuff? Like, I don't know. It's, cra- it's just crazy to me, bro. Cause I went, I went out in the world and I just saw, I just seen so much, man. And everybody really just wants to be accepted, but most people just push each other. We just push each other away because you're different. Why? like i I can't eat yeah i wish i could answer it you said it it's it's everybody wants to be listened i heard this by simon sinek and i i think i can quote him on this you know everybody wants to be seen listened to and understood is what he said on a podcast the other day i think i listened to it on the train back from the beach and i just thought to myself i said that is so true but then why are those same people so fucking selfish you know, selfish enough to like not want to open up or not want to include others or not use the terms like I, my, and mine uh, and, and start using we, our, and us, you know, there's just like, yeah. it's, it's a kind of like an, sadly, it's a rabbit hole type conversation. And I wish we could sit here for two hours and talk about <laughs> that, but we'll bring you on oh. Somo 2.0. We'll, we'll, we'll bring you back. But you know, it's, it's often, I think people wonder that, but it's only the ones who, who I think are trying to understand that who who have the question you said why are people so pushy and and not wanting to like be inclusive and build community and then on the other hand I, don't get me wrong there's a lot of people who are really trying to build that like you and I are the kind of guys that we'd go call people and say hey let's go let's get a group together and do this no matter where you come from and all that stuff or you know right. like I'll, we'll dress certain ways and like not even think twice about where people would come from who dress like that for example like it's just not things we have in mind and I think some of that comes to like the level of maturity you have after you've kind of like realized where you're spending your time and energy, what's actually important. I mean, you mentioned tapping into like the God and universe earlier in terms of just like finding balance probably, or just kind of building a better version of yourself possibly. And sometimes it takes those check-in points, which is why I wanted to ask you about checking in with yourself earlier, you know, cause it's so many times all of us have the same questions and, and nobody really talks about it. AKA this podcast for us to banter about it right now, right? <laughs> yeah. It's people and people are not mourning, right? Mourning is like when people die, but if it, the people are hungry for this type of conversation and everything you've set up until this point right now is I think what people have also asked themselves or considered for themselves or wanted to put on overalls, but maybe didn't because they're too scared of what people might think on social media and shit. And to your point earlier about, you know, it's overconsumption sometimes. And I always use the term too much, T-O-O much. Like every time I see something, I'm, oh, that's too much. I can't, I can't even put my energy towards that. You know what I mean? But you've probably gotten to that point too, Joseph. Like you're so busy with trying to create for the world, right? With the album and the music. And, and then you have your two daughters. And before this, you were touring all the time. You don't really want to put your energy where it doesn't belong. Am I right? Totally. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I, I sit, I sit around and think a lot. I think musicians and even you at running like a podcast, like we're, we're modern day philosophers. And like a lot of people, like you talked about Seneca and he was a philosopher. A lot of these people are just, they were just like us. And most of them were drunk if it was before like 1900. Yeah, that's exactly. They literally had to drink, drink a alcohol. moonshine stuff. Yeah, I mean, they, that was the only clean thing to drink, but like we, we all have the ability to think deep and like really like assess our direction. And in 1900, like people thought they were the most advanced ever right and now we think we're the most advanced ever but in in 2100 like they're gonna look at us and be like bro like what like they had they use plastic like all that stuff so it's like i don't know i just think i think people in order to progress we need to think more like internally and come up with more things like what you said what seneca said like people just want to be seen and like heard and 
I think we're kind of stuck right now, just arguing about the same stuff, like our society in general. And a, a lot of that's been an argument for so many years. And like, yeah, all this talk about like I see it on on TikTok, like the conspiracy stuff, like all the aliens, like they think aliens are coming, and like, well, everybody just we all want to know what's gonna ha- happen, like when we die, like everybody's got something. Like I think I'm an I'm an alien star seed, or I'm like my horoscope means I'm gonna end up like this, or like God is and Jesus told told me that this is this, and or I'm Muslim and, and this is what this is, but like like i'm i'm me and you are you and if i were you i'd be you but if you were me you'd be me like we all have our path and if you would have lived the path that i lived then you would be me and if i lived the path that you lived i'd be you like we can't change that about each other but we can all combine our thoughts and like expand right Real That's kind of confusing, but That's like not confusing. I loved every little <laughs> snippet of that. It's like a poem I wrote. The the if I were you, you were if I were you, I'd I'd be you, and if you were me, you'd be me. Like we can't change that about each other. You so, can't. It's inevitable. Another thing that's inevitable is fear. I think that drives a lot of what, oh, he's taking his first sip of water. You need to stay hydrated. I know you had your double espresso, Joseph, but trust me when I say water will keep you alive a lot longer. Uh, oh yeah right you, you know that you're outside all day uh, i say that in the, in the new album <laughs> see <laughs> dude and fear is driving a lot of actions in general good and bad i think some people lead with fear for good and some people lead with fear for bad and you just said it some people are so scared to ask themselves these hard questions or to open up enough to talk about deeper topics. I've always been a fan of it because my parents raised me this way and you've always been in tune with like your deeper inner person, for example. Don't know if there's any other way to say that, but like right. if you're if you're kind of groomed in an early age to like ask yourself hard questions or you've experienced a lot of life, you you don't really fear anything, even death. I don't fear death. And I'll say that on the podcast. And uh, a lot of people, not just for dying, but People are so scared to just talk because they're scared of what people are going to think. They're scared of what it's going to like look and like you're not tweeting your thoughts. Like it's not like someone's going to go track your ass like they did with Kevin Hart, which I thought was bullshit. Like there's just so much, you know, that, that you could talk about openly with people. And that's why therapy exists, right? I think so many people are going into therapy now with an, with an open mind that they can talk about anything, but then you really have to know if you're giving yourself a safe space enough to go to a therapist, I hope, and this is for all of my friends and anybody listening, that you are also asking yourself hard questions as you're in those sessions. Otherwise, you're just offloading a bunch of word vomit. But realistically, like you'd said, it's there's a lot of things that people are curious about that we often wonder about that you can simply connect with one other person on and discuss, even if you have to agree to disagree. Imagine. Right. How many conversations could lead to that kind of good? That is, and that's therapy. I mean, that's a lot of people fear therapy because they think, you know, they're, they're rooted in the boomer mindset of like, oh, it means you're crazy. And it's all all it is, is like a lot of people, like my, my weight, the weight of my thoughts might be too much for like my girl or one of my, my homies. Like it, it just might be too much. They might have their own weight in their head that they're trying to like carry. And that's what therapists are good for, you know, and I don't go to therapy, but I probably should. <laughs> but it, like you said, it's just having someone to like offload that weight I, and, and just yeah. talk about. Stuff. There's different because outlets you're gonna for feel it hundred percent. There's so many different outlets for it. For sure. And right? I mean, using Twitter, I mean, that might work for some people, like you said, but then you're just putting all your thought, like, you don't need to tell everybody everything. It's like trim the fat. I have a lot of thoughts. Some of them are insane, yeah, but yeah. if I narrow it down to the one good thought, maybe that could help somebody in a tweet. <laughs> yeah. You bring up a good point. Cause it doesn't have to be social media that you then put those thoughts on. You could journal. Right. I mean, right. raise your hand <laughs> silently. I guess if you're listening, like if, if you journal, I think journaling is so healthy. It's not a diary. Like you don't have to talk to yourself. You don't have to like, you know, it's, I think there's 
misconceptions for some reason society drives us to think that like therapy has to be a certain way journaling has to be a certain way or whatever that might look like but realistically if you think about it you can kind of turn it into whatever you want to podcasting could be a certain thing just starting this 40 plus year weeks ago i was gonna say years 40 50 <laughs> plus weeks ago joseph like i didn't care what people thought podcasting was starting this for example your album similar to how you were able to produce all these songs. I'm sure you didn't care about what other musicians were writing about today. You know, it's, right. it's what you need to make out of it. And I'll say this because you said you don't go to therapy. <sighs> this is my therapy in a way. Totally. Right. And music might be yours. Hey man, this, this, this whole session has been therapeutic for me. <laughs> I mean, I don't talk to a lot of people. Like I have my, my homies and, and stuff, but like, I don't, I just talk to myself. And then, like you said, like journaling, like a lot of dudes might be like journaling. That's so like, what? I'm not going to journal what, but bro, journaling could literally be simple as like, I'm mad at the like cashier that just like was a bitch to me at home Depot. And so when I sit, get into my Jeep, I write in my notes in, in my phone, like just, just so it one goes line, somewhere. Like, like I might write like, oh, fuck bitch is a fuck bitch. Like, and it's just something I would never say like out loud. I mean, I guess I said it right now, but you know, like I said it to myself and I get that out and I put it in a note and then it's gone. I say that in the album, like talking on my song, write a book. I say something about like, I put it in a note because like a lot of my songs are therapy for me. And I feel like when I get that, thought out and I like put it in a song I can like cast it away on a ship and if I want to I can revisit it and if not it, it can sail away and everybody else can consume it assume what they want about it that they can take it in and be like wow I feel that way too but for me I did it it's gone it's in a time capsule that's a song for me a song is just a time capsule of a moment of how I was feeling am I feeling sexual today let me put it in a song in this moment because I want I feel the best about it that I do right now. So I put in a song, boom, then I get something like ride and wow, my life's changed because everybody else felt that way when they heard it too. You know, that's man. That's, I saw my thing I've thought about before, but I haven't actually said out loud like this. It's like, it really is like a song is just a time capsule. It's just a moment. And like, that's why when, when you hear a song from high school, like you go back to that moment, like a song that, somebody else wrote is like it's again back to the now. therapy note if you really think about it how many times have you like, like we said it earlier musical therapy right you tune into certain songs or tunes given your emotional state and 170 million plus people have done that to that song of yours right yeah. life-changing life isn't that crazy <laughs> it's great i mean people say they they made babies for that song like yeah bro i, I literally my- grant I was telling our producer on the call right now. I was like, wait, he's like, I th- I've totally heard that song. I was like, yeah, when you were having sex, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not a bad thing though. You know, it's like, I might listen to like hardcore music when I work out, you know, it's like, that's that energy is in those, that, that energy is in that song. You can yep. take that energy from those people and channel it. Yeah. And like, 100%. I really was channeling what I said in that song. Like, and that goes back to what you said about having intent and like walking versus wandering. Like I was running in that bitch. That was, that was like, I was what? 23, 24. Yeah, you that were. was, that was 24 years of pent up. Like, this is what I want to say to the woman in front of me and the world of women. And I said it and then boom. And people felt that, you know, like, I don't know. A lot of people say like that. That's why I tell like artists out there, like I see a lot of artists now. It's a, it's so easy to publish music and like put stuff out, but like put your stuff out for free first, like put make mixtapes. Don't call it your debut album because a lot of people, especially in the industry, they're like, yo, you've lived what? 18 years, 20 years, 25 years. Your first album is all that energy. 25 years of energy put into that debut album. Like you only get that one time and I'm on my eighth album, right? Like, I don't think I'm out of ideas at all. I think I'm getting better, you know, but like, I only got that debut album one time. I only got that first sex song. Ride was my first sex song. It was the second song I 
professionally made. Like, and the first one was Kings and Queens, which was a party song. I don't know if you know that one, but. 100%. Of course I remember that. But it's just like, that that was all the energy from like that those manifesting moments of me being like, I'm going to be a singer when I go. It's like, who, who was I when I made those songs? That's who I was. And now I'm a father. And so that's why I made the duality of man, because I want people to be like, I can go back to the Kings and Queens Somo when I want to feel young and I want to party. But now a lot of my fans are growing up and having children. Like we're not going out partying all night. Like most people are going to bed at 10. So, I mean, if anything, this album is for the people who feel like that, you know, like that have been with me and you're not to that point yet, but I put that energy out and you can follow it and you can model your life after it or just take that energy and do with it how you please. Like maybe you'll make a baby to ride in a few years. You don't know, you know, like it's always going to be there in a time capsule. It's like, there's my energy for you, bro. I oh, set the, the, the template for it, you know? Yeah. Template of life, dude. I don't even know what to name your podcast episode at this point. We do. We've, <laughs> we've hit it. We've hit every little nail I wanted to hit uh, to your countryman vibes, right? Nail on the, whatever you're putting a nail on nowadays. Dude, <laughs> I've just spent the last hour with you. And we caught up on like four years of time, not lost time, but four fucking years later, uh, here you are. Thank you. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for saying <laughs> everything that you did, dude. You said long-winded and I kept going, dude, this is a podcast. They're supposed to be long-winded. You know what I right. mean? Right, true. I yeah, I mean, this been... was two years of conversation for me that I've just kind of held in probably, um, you know, considering. <laughs> Joseph, Somo, whatever I can call you, uh, duality of man, I'm going to call you all of it. Uh, thank you. Anybody who's listening right now, I'm sure you would have seen all the promo pieces put out around his podcast. So you can follow him on social, YouTube, check out his latest album, The Duality of Man. And I can't thank you enough for choosing this podcast when you could have chose all the other millions out there, but right now you're tuning into this one. This is the men of the hour. And we just had, I'm going to say it ready. Joseph Anthony Summers Morales, AKA Somo. Thank you for letting us be the first podcast you recorded with buddy. And I, uh, again, I give you all my thanks and love, and I can't wait to see you in person. You'd better make it to New York. I'll have to fly to Texas. Hey man, I'm, I'm down. I haven't traveled in a while. So <laughs> <laughs> you're always welcome here too though. You're the best buddy.